nice introduction there, Anthony. Um, as Anthony said, I am a primary school teacher. I am, a, I am in class, actually, normally today, but not today because I'm here. Um, and I teach no, mainly year four, five, and six over my career, so up to stage two. But something which I'm very passionate about in my school is programming and the power in the classroom. I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the work um, and the journey my school's been on by using programming and, in particular, using to do it yourself. Now, I'm representing uh, my school, which is Nightingale Primary School in Redbridge, but also uh, the Redbridge Games Network, which is a network of schools which look at gaming and innovative technologies uh, across, uh, across the whole of Redbridge. Um, I'll start very simply how we used it. Well, the journey for me at uh, my school uh, we started off in a sort of trial program. It first came out, in fact, I might even had a test copy just before it came out about three years ago. And we started looking at it in year six how this bit of software we use. And we very quickly got into the idea of an actual script program, which I will very quickly show you uh, what that is in a moment. Um, and what actual script program does, it allows you to basically program and actually code. So a bit like logo. Those of you who remember logo, it's that sort of programming language, but a bit more advanced. Um, from that initial work in year six, which we did some brilliant work, we did some great um, work at other conferences, which I'll really talk about in a second as well. I moved it into year four and made it part of the curriculum year three and four. Now, the first year I did it year four, I thought to myself, the year four children aren't going to be able to do access to It's far too complicated. It's far too much. But during the course of the lessons, very quickly, they realised that, oh, wait a second, I actually, they need it. Like, Mr. Hughes, Mr. Hughes, I can't do this. How do I make you do this, this, and this? And so I actually had to start teaching them the stuff I taught in year six the previous year to year four children. So the programming uh, is brilliant because it allows children to make demands and it, and it can cope with it. Um, and it was I, something I did, initially didn't expect year four children to do. So we went through that that year and made uh, made some adjustments and then the issue would come to again. I started teaching actual programming to the children, which allows you to tweak the game beyond what you normally can. If any of you have played with 2 DIY, 3 uh, 2 DIY, you'll know what you can do, but there's an extra level on top of that, so 2 DIY plus almost. Um, where, where did I use it? It goes everywhere in the curriculum. We've made literacy games with World War II. We've made um, literacy games where we retold the story of the snowman at Christmas. That classic story you do. Christmas time, what story do you do? Snowman. So we made some games about that. Uh, we've done uh, science games. We've looked at uh, making, uh, choosing healthy foods. We've done all, all manner of types of games. Um, now, Anthony just said they've introduced me. Why should we program? It's always been part of the curriculum. It is not always dull. Michael Goat said yesterday that the IT curriculum is dull. Well, that's not necessarily always true. It just look, it requires you to be a little bit more adventurous with the program study, but it will fit if it's squarely within the program study. Right now, you can do programming. Um, but maybe we can go a bit further, expand on it now. Now we've been, in theory, given a little bit of leeway and freedom to do even more. Um, this is what children said about it. It's fine, exciting, it's interesting, they like making the monsters, they like what making games look like. Um, and the, the crux of why we started doing this, and again, Go said it yesterday, and I did prepare this before his speech, so it's not an ambition, um, that we have a lack of software creators. And the only way we're going to get children into programming is to expose them to it in school now. So expose them to it in Key Stage 2, maybe in Key Stage 1 you can do it in a limited way, and then as they move through their school career, they'll get more and more interested in it. If we don't expose them to it, it's, it's not going to happen. So this, this uh, 2DI1 and 2DI3D are a brilliant really bit of software which allows you to simply introduce programming and get some really good advanced programming concepts across the children. Um, how do I teach it? Classics, normal teacher way of doing things. We discuss it and talk about what is a good game. You have, that is the only question you'll ever ask in a classroom or there'll be 30 experts in the class because they'll all have an opinion on what a good game is. So what's a good game? Well, I think it's this, 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 this. Because they all play games. They are the experts. In the weirdly, it's all very rare that it's a bit of a role reversal because they will know much more about gaming than probably you will unless you're a hardcore gamer and go home and play Halo every night in a, 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 a World of Warcraft. <laughs> But we talked a lot about it, like it's challenging, what is a challenging game. That was the crux of our argument, because very quickly the children will make a game, and if you saw the presentation earlier, the children had some interesting ideas about what numbers they should put in. And the first few times you did it, the games are absolutely impossible because they can't do it. But you have to go through the classic, very old school um, cycle of good control technology, which is you make it, you test it, and you improve it, which is what you do for all control technology. Um, you just have to go through that to make the games. Um, 
lastly, before I go and show some demos and some things, um, it, it's really good at empowering learners because they are the experts. They can become the experts very easily. It's easy to learn this piece of software. Um, and this is a project I did with my year six, two years ago now, uh, where we went to a conference and they stood up here. They were in my place, so year six children, nine year, nine and ten year, uh, ten and eleven, sorry, and they taught the adults in the room and the children in the room how to do it. They were empowered. They were the teachers. Um, and tomorrow, come back at half past ten tomorrow morning, and four children from my class will be standing where I am, telling you about some of the games they've made. I will not be. I will hopefully be hiding over there, and they'll hopefully do perfectly. But they will be empowered. That's what they can do. They know games. Um, I'll come back to these at the end. These are two vlogs with all the games and information, but I will show you some of these now. And just a couple of the games I've selected. It's pretty bit too much fast. Okay, okay. Play now. 
everything will come down a lot quicker. So instantly, just by using programming, I've altered the challenge of the game, which is what the emphasis of all the work I'm doing in my school is to make the game more challenging. Because you can make a game and it might be easy or it might be too difficult, but that by using programming, we can subtly alter it to make the challenge there. Um, I'll show you how to do something a little bit more advanced. Now this is a, a platform game, and my current game is, I think the player just showed it to you, I've got my little ninja at the top, and he has to go around and collect all the little bowls of food, and I've got a star, which I'm going to turn into a power-up, and I'm going to turn this door into a teleporter, because I can't get up there, so I'm going to use this doorway to turn into a teleporter, okay? Now, when you normally start these games, I've already half done this, the little, uh, these blue guys are enemies, they're, they're normally shown by little red, um, little red symbol with two legs. Now the way I teach it to children is those enemies, what things are generally bad things, can be good and bad, so they're action objects. So this and this are, this, the door and the star are action objects, they should, are bad guys which are going to make good, if that makes any sense. Um, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to make this teleport, so I'm going to click on it, and normally if I touch it, it loses me alive, which I don't want it to kill me, I want it to do something positive. So I'm going to click on Advanced, and this is where, this white empty box is quite scary to people, but you've got a lot of help with this build script build, and once you know what you're doing, it's, actually, it's very simple to do. So I'm just going to quickly add in how to teleport him, and I'll explain what it means in one second. means is, those math people in the audience, if you remember your um, coordinate grids, this is saying x coordinate, y coordinate. So I'm telling the, when the, guy, when the little guy is, touches the door, he's going to be transported to that x and y coordinate. So, the way it works is this is zero. So it moves along this way to about 640, I think, and down here to about 480. So if I test my game using my player uh, assessment sort, the player review assess side, uh, view side, I come along, try and avoid the guys, and hopefully, yes, worked. So now, if you if, if you blinked and didn't see it, you touched there and instantly appeared up here. I could play around with it and make it appear straight in front of the doorway, but for now I'll leave it as it is. And I've now played that last night. If I want to make him jump higher, because if you look at him at the moment, oops, I've just got hurt. If you look at him jumping high, he jumps as high as that, okay? And I can also give a power up to make him jump higher as well. Now if I right click on that green arrow, it again exposes the guts of the program and sort of some of the more interesting programs. And this bit here tells you how high he jumps. So I'm just going to copy it. And this morning, all the children this morning all know how to copy and paste, so hopefully everyone in the audience can do that as well. So I copied it. And now I'm going to go to my star, I'm going to click on advanced, and if I paste, oops, not a man, um, if I paste that in, what it means is when I touch the star, it's going to change the, the jump height of the level. So I'm going to change it to 20 to make it jump higher, and then I'm going to keep playing. Hopefully, if all goes well, this game will work properly now. Oops, I should drop to the Bad guys, this is where I was to kill myself. There you go, so now he... Oops. Uh, I failed horribly at that, I did it perfectly the first time around. And so now he did jump higher, so straight away you can see it. Just very quickly, just very quickly to rapidly prototype the game. Playing around with it, fiddle with settings, you can see the effect very quickly in a few minutes. Now, on my blog, is more information to do with that and some more uh, if you're particularly hopefully you're very interested but some more information about how to play around with those action scripts um, just gives you some nice clear step-by-step -step instructions of how to do that and i've put my blog address up so you can read that if you want if you want to ask any questions i'll be around for the next five ten minutes you're welcome to come to me and chat to me thank you very much